Hello and welcome to Connect. I'm your host, Randy Shabilo. We're on location today at the Road Coffee Co. and interviewing Alicia Esmael, as well as Will Luftall from Sastel Center. And as always, we'd like to hear from you. Tweet us at connect underscore YXZ. Follow us on Facebook to watch new and past interviews or email connectyxe at gmail.com with any future guest or topic suggestions. Saskatoon's coffee scene has some very interesting people working behind the scenes and one of them is Alicia Ismael of uh, Road Coffee Co. I've invited her to come on to the show at we're in her place today. Uh, Alicia, thank you so much for letting us come and see what you have going on and hear about your story. Ah, thanks for joining me here at the shop today, Randy. I want to know a little bit more about you uh, and, and how this concept came to be. I can't imagine you just woke up one day and, and thought I want to get involved in roasting coffee. Uh, who is Alicia and how did she come to be in this role? This is a good question. So I've actually, strangely enough, always been really passionate about coffee since I was a teenager. Um, but my background is actually in international development. So I spent about six and a half years working overseas in places like Nepal, South Africa, Haiti, Jordan, Panama. And in my time there, I spent time doing water security projects, food security projects, primary health care clinics. It was my dream job at the time, I loved it. But the more I traveled and worked overseas, the more I saw farmers being taken advantage of. And they were, they had to become price, or they were price takers because of a traditional value chain. Um, and being interested in coffee, I would often spend a lot of my free time on coffee and tea plantations, just hanging out with, with families and getting to know the process and learning about the farms. And then I'd come back to either Saskatoon here or back to the States where I was based out of. And the first thing I'd do when I got off a plane was go spend five, seven dollars on a coffee. And so the disconnect there really started to bug me. And so a few years ago, I decided to move home to Saskatoon and start Road Coffee as a way to bridge the gap between farmers and consumers. So it's not just about coffee, there's a story there as well. And I, I think that's uh, important to note. We, we keep hearing about uh, fair trade and, and uh, complementing the source of where a lot of our uh, primary products come from. Uh, where do you source a lot of, I guess we can tell a little bit about where you source some of your beans and so on. Uh, do they come raw? Do you roast them here? What do you do? So we source them from around the world. Uh, I've been working pretty hard the last few years at um, finding exporters that we can work with directly to cut out the importer and that way we can ensure the exporters and the farmers are getting more of the margin uh, that they deserve for putting in 80% of the hard work. So we, we import that coffee here. It uh, comes all the way to Saskatoon and then here um, in this space we roast it, package it, label it and then send it out to restaurants, offices and retail locations uh, and cafes of course. So how, how would you uh, begin with the roasting process? Uh, you, you're getting your beans uh, imported in uh, different stages and qu quality and quantity, so you're going to kind of blend some of them perhaps, or you, you have a bit of a, a palate for that? Yeah, it's, uh, it's quite an experience when you're trying to create uh, a blend or bring out the flavors from a specific coffee. Uh, there's a lot of philosophy around roasting. Um, there's some, some tricks to the trade, but then each roaster also kind of has their own philosophy. Uh, what we do is we do a lot of single origin coffees, and so that just means we, we don't mix them. But then we have a few uh, really popular blends like our Ignition Blend and our Mixtape Espresso. Can, can you just educate me about that then? Is, is, if I was, uh, wines are very common, people would understand you know, a Chardonnay grape from a Riesling grape or something like that, and, and different sweetnesses. Would, would there be different types of coffee? What, uh, what are those factors that you look for when you're, uh, when you're roasting and trying to achieve that, that, spe that specific taste of the bean? Mm. So we usually start at what type of variety the coffee is. It could come from a Typica plant or a Geisha plant. Um, so we'd start with that and then we'd, we'd talk to the farmers and the exporters and see kind of what that bean profile usually tastes like and what it, what it was graded at. And they might give us uh, a, suggested, um, a suggested list of tasting notes like, oh, like 
this coffee has some floral notes and cocoa and brown sugar and then we'll sample roast that coffee a few different ways and decide which which roast profile best brings out that coffee. Uh, so you're, you're grinding it as well then or you're just roasting the bean and, and handing that off to the cafes and restaurants that they would then for their process? So we do a bit of both. We yeah. do a lot of whole bean, but we also pre-grind our coffee for a number of clients as well. And, and where would I find that if I was to go looking for that particular type of coffee and, and I'd, I would have some assurance that I'd have a, a fairly good pipeline into it months down the road or does it kind of go through cycles of availability? Uh, for the for the green coffee, the yeah. raw coffee, yeah, yeah, it definitely goes through seasons. So we're actually about to enter harvest season for Central America right now. It goes uh, the end of November all the way to March, depending on the weather. Um, and then there's places like Brazil who they can just produce coffee all year round. They're the world's largest coffee producing country and, and that's a big part to why. And a lot of the farms that you visited, these are fairly labor intensive, I would imagine. There's not a lot of mechanization, much like we would do combining of wheat or grains here. Uh, what, what is that like when you have been to some of the coffee bean producers? Mm. It's definitely like traveling back in time a little bit. Like you're correct, there isn't a lot of technology around it at this point. Um, coffee's still 99% of the time picked by hand, one at a time. And so it's a very labor intensive, intensive job, especially considering most coffee farms are high in elevation. And so you're often kind of like on a mountainside trying to, trying to pick coffee. I've never been and I, I don't know, but I am aware of, of uh, you know, some other business owners who have uh, typically gone to get the lowest price. And there's reasons for that we understand, but I, I am aware that those same business owners have bid the farmers out of business. Uh, so I, I really admire the process that you're taking on in terms of uh, ensuring that people have a, a, a fair way of life in their home countries and, and where you're getting these beans from. Uh, some of the countries that you, you mentioned earlier, they're, uh, they're all over the world, but are there some specific that you can mention? For sure, yeah. yeah we have uh, fantastic coffee that we buy from Laos, uh, one of our newest direct trades, Costa Rica. We've uh, my first direct trade was actually with Guatemala, which was really fun. Uh, we also just set up a new place, uh, new farms that we're buying from in Mexico, which is really exciting. And uh, we're working on a couple new ones as well. So these are places that you've actually been to or have networked with the producers themselves. Yes. And yeah. when you're trying to to source that product. There, there has to be, uh, I, I would imagine, things of, of dollar values and fluctuations in currencies, uh, transportation, things of that nature. How, how do you ensure the beans get here with the quality you need? What we usually do is we, we sample the coffee before we buy it to, to make sure it is to a certain standard. We only buy specialty coffee, and so that means uh, it's graded between 80 to 100. So coffee is usually graded on a scale from 60 to 100 and 60 to 80 is commercial coffee. It's most of what you might find at the grocery store and then specialty coffee is graded 80 to 100. So this is all fine quality specialty uh, for that refined palate or people that might appreciate coffee more so. Yeah, exactly. So can I, can I make your, uh, your coffee in my regular coffee maker? Do I need a special machine to do that? No, you can make it in mm. a regular brewer and an espresso machine. Uh, I drink a French press of it every morning. <laughs> I, I, would, <laughs> I would imagine you must get lit up throughout the day if you're <laughs> in here all the time. Uh, tell us a little bit about what's happening at, at Innovation Place and, and uh, some of the work that's uh, going to be happening in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, there's a lot of exciting things happening. Uh, Saskatchewan is strangely um, this amazing tech hub in Canada and I've had the privilege of being in the co-launch program at Colabs at Innovation Place uh, this fall, and uh, I'm actually uh, going to be. I am presenting at the finale, which is going to be fantastic. Tell us uh, a little bit about what you see happening in the future for your company. What would you ideally, if we could look forward in about a year or two, uh, what would you like to see? 
Right, so uh, as we're growing, we're actually uh, splitting off into two companies. We're starting an online marketplace for exporters to be able to sell directly to roasters. It's basically taking our current business model and creating a platform for more exporters and roasters to deal directly, cutting out the middleman, and it increases the exporters' margins by 400% and the farmers by double, bringing the farmers, coffee farmers, out of the red and into profitability. So it's, it's a really exciting project, and uh, stay tuned. <laughs> So we have uh, we have a number of things underway with uh, with your company in particular, and that is uh, the quality of the coffee, the the source of it, uh, and, and the story of the the I guess the source, uh, the farmers themselves that are benefiting directly by supporting a company like yours. And I think that's a very noble gesture, and thank you for doing that. I uh, appreciate all the time you've given us today. I wish you all the best. Uh, with Road Coffee Co. and maybe we'll talk to you in a couple of months and see how things are going. Sounds great, Randy. Thanks for joining me today. Right on. We'll be right back.